Today, I'm going to dig a little bit deeper into relearn after the, the last video that Charlie did for us. And we're going to set up uh, selected track sends on a MIDI controller. So let's jump into it. All right, so here in Reaper, and what I want to do is first set up my uh, MIDI devices, make sure that they are set right. Um, as you can see here, I got a lot of different ones uh, installed, but the one that I'm using today is going to be AutoMap MIDI, and I've got it set to input only uh, control messages. And I've also got output enabled, because we're gonna do the uh, MIDI feedback thing. Uh, using relearn here. Just make sure that enable output to this device is set. So if you have another uh, MIDI controller that has endless rotary encoders, then yeah, set yours up the same way. That's all we need in here. I'm gonna make a new track. I'm gonna call it relearn. And I'm going to set its input to the Novation Nocturne, which is the auto map. Um, or you can set it to all MIDI inputs. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to set it to all, actually. And we're going to record enable it. And we're going to right click and choose record disable, input monitoring only. And we'll um, arm it for monitoring so that the plugin, just to make sure that all those options are there and so that the plugin can um, learn MIDI CCs. All that stuff may not be entirely necessary, but we're going to just check those just to make sure. Here's relearn, and we're gonna set this up so that um, it works with the MIDI controller. So here's the MIDI controller. Ugh. I've got these eight knobs here. They have LED rings around them. Um, I'm sure I'll put in some B-roll of close-ups. When I turn the knob, I want the value in Reaper to match. There's different ways of setting it up, and how I've previously set it up is having the knob send just plus one or minus one whenever you move it. And it has a, an increment decrement mode. And in Reaper, you would set that up as a relative mode three. And um, and then you can map things. You wouldn't get any feedback on this um, or in its control mapping software, this one. The knobs would just be non-moving here. We're gonna enable MIDI feedback and in, uh, input and output. We're gonna just choose uh, auto map MIDI for the input and output. Because we want this to work on selected track sends, we need two more tracks just to get this mapping set up. So I'm going to make a couple sends by just dragging and dropping here. So that's one send, two sends, three sends, four sends. And if we look at the mixer, we've got four sends from this track to this track. We just need something on the track so that we can uh, MIDI map it. We're going to mapping and click on edit, going to learn the source, which is a CC value, and we'll do that. So I've moved that, and I'm gonna hit um, the control panel. So we're just gonna move, assign these four knobs here. So right now you can see the value is there, and we're going to map this to the send. So let's change type to track send volume, and track instead of this track, or any specific track, we're going to set it to selected. We need to make sure that the track is selected so that we have those sends. So there's the first send. Um, you can kind of ignore the name of this. It's just going to go in order. Um, track three and choose track must be selected. <clears throat> and we can test this right now. And there we go. And so I've got this turned all the way down. I see infinite here. I see infinite here and I see it's at zero here, and the LED ring is matching. What's great about doing it this way is that this is very much a like one-to-one -one sort of ratio or gearing. Um, I think you can change that in some of these other options. Um, like I said at the beginning of the previous video, I'm not an expert on this stuff. I didn't think I would have enough time to learn this to teach it, and so that's why I got Charlie to do it. Uh, but seeing how easy he made that look, I figured since I got a bit of time today, I'm going to dig in and and just try to solve one problem, the the sends. And so, yeah, there we go. I think with the control transformation and the feedback options, we can adjust that to like make it slower. But I don't know anything about that, so we'll just ignore that for now. 
only other thing here is we want to call this uh, selected uh, track send one. And I found that this wouldn't always save. You'd have to click on somewhere else with a text box before it uh, shows the new name at the top. I clicked here and now edit mapping was uh, set up there. So I'm going to copy that text so we can do the next one. Um, it's going to duplicate, go to edit, and I'm going to put in that new name. We're going to learn the second knob on the controller. And we're going to make sure that this is going to the second send. Click OK. And so I've got this track selected. When I move this first knob, it moves the first send. When I move the second knob, it moves the second send. And when I select the next track, the, the values on the control software, the values on the controller are both at zero. And I got a button on my keyboard to actually go to different tracks. So, so yeah, um, that appears to be working perfectly. So uh, inside the AutoMap software, I'm just using the default values, normal mode with 128 uh, points. Um, we can make this go slower, I think, by changing this to 0 0.5. Your MIDI controller may not have these options. I think that goes slower now. Yeah, that's much slower now. Your MIDI controller software probably doesn't have these options, so I don't want to spend too much time on the specific things about this one. But yeah, if you have um, a Behringer controller or anything that has those LED rings around the knobs, this should work uh, for at least for this track send volume levels following the selected track. So I repeated this process, so I have four sends altogether. And I just save that as a preset. And so if I select this track, I can use this knob for the first send, this knob for the second, this one for the third, and this one for the fourth. And depending on which track is selected, the values are going to follow. So let's jump into another project and something that actually has sends in it. So we're in this mixing project, and I'm just going to open up Relearn. Uh, and put it onto this first empty track. I'm going to call up my preset for those selected sends. This track doesn't need to be armed or anything like that, as far as I know. Um, it should follow the selected tracks. So, so we've got send levels for these reverbs on these three tracks, and then in the drum sampler. I don't want to mess with those, but let's go over to... As I cycle through these tracks, you can see that um, the bass amp track doesn't have a send, but the bass DI track does. Some of these guitar reverbs and things have uh, have sends. Obviously, you'd want a more ergonomic setup, like you know, put the controller in front of you. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> One downside of doing it this way, uh, compared to the previous way that I had tried to do this, is um, it will only adjust the first selected track. Um, it's kind of expected that you would get jumping values if you're selecting two tracks with sends and you want to control them both at the same time and they were previously at different values. You would kind of expect a jump, but unfortunately with Relearn, at least at this time, there's no way to control multiple tracks. Uh, sends. Using the other option, and I'll open up um, the action list, um, go to, what is it? Adjust track send volume one. I do it like this. So I take, actually I'll take this send, and I'll make sure that my controller is set to range increment decrement, which is probably not available on your controller, so don't worry about that. And then set the relative mode to uh, relative mode three. So I go to these two tracks that are selected, and I can adjust them. Uh, they actually don't jump. They're just kind of trimming the, the values that were already there. So I can use this one to make a, a larger jump. And it's very much like a one-to-one -one 
sort of ratio. And then this one is very, very slow moving those, um, those parameters. Um, and there's no feedback on the device. So there's pros and cons with each. For my setup, I might do the fast way with relearn, that one-to-one -one sort of ratio of moving the knob and seeing what's happening. Um, and then maybe on page two of my mapping, I'll have the fine control with this other way, the increment-decrement mode. So I think probably depending on your hardware, you can get something that works um, better than um, better than right out of the box with relearn. And I think this is pretty useful. Uh, definitely um, reduces some of the barriers uh, when mixing. For example, I could not show the mixer at all, and I could have this auto map thing up in the corner on my second monitor, which I just realized you can't see when I move the screen there. But um, but yeah, it's it's a very useful thing, and I hope you try it out. So that's where I'm going to end it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon, and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. Bye.